Paul, congratulations Thank on you. your success so far this season. Uh, your first year behind the bench in Florida. Right. Uh, what were your expectations coming in for this team, and where are they at right now ahead yeah. of game one of the Stanley Cup final? Well, Bill was real clear this summer, and it was part of the attraction, the idea. So they had just this phenomenal year last year, and then you lost about seven players, you know, and that, there was going to be some adversity in that because the only thing better is if we had 123 points, right? So <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. And there was also a clear understanding that the style of play had to evolve to a game that you could replicate in the playoffs. And sometimes that can be tough on the players. It can be challenging for them. So that was part of the, the, the enticement. This was going to be difficult, and I didn't mind uh, if, if it got a little tough for a while, but he was very clear on the direction, and, and you saw it in the players that he brought in, and this is where we're going. This is what I need from you. Are you interested? And I was. I love that. I, I, I want to ask you this question, though, because uh, I find, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, so if you could tell me you're wrong. He will. Um, I'll go with that. <laughs> I would expect you to do that. Yeah. Um, but is how important, or is it important for players to have a little bit of blank you in their game and how that translates into the playoffs and like having star players I'm alluding right. basically to Matthew right in a way that he kind of sets the tone because he's got this pushback in this right. game like he's not going to back down from anything well you, you would know this about how hard it is to get to this point if you don't have some spine you're not getting here and that is true of an individual just to make it to the NHL but to become an elite player in the NHL you play against the other team's best every single night. You play whether you're healthy or you're hurt. You've got the eyes of the world and then critiquing you. You you have to have some of that spine. Here's the interesting thing about Matthew, and I didn't know this. So he is wonderful with his teammates. He's very calm. He, he, what you see on the ice, what, what, you, what he projects from the ice is not the way he interacts with the people in our locker room or our bus drivers, or the flight attendants, mm -hmm. or the ticket staff. And I didn't know that about him. I had heard some stories about his dad in Winnipeg doing some really, really special things in the community that nobody ever knew about. This young man is a gem. Yeah, and that comes from Walt. I mean, I played with right. Walt at a couple of different spots. I knew Matt when he was three and four and Walt. ten years old back in the day. And, and that's from Chantel and that's from Walt and, right. and teaching him and Brady to, to treat everyone that way. And it, it's a real credit to them because, you know, he's good enough that maybe he wouldn't have to be polite all the time and, and people wouldn't say anything because he's that great. And consistently with it. So Always. it's, not, it's yeah. not an act, right? Yeah. It's not, hey, you got to go out and be a nice person so they try for a couple hours. This is who this young man is. And also part of the challenge when you're a player as important as Matthew Kachuk is with your group, but you're new. Like right. how to integrate your right. game and your personality, which is big and important, into the group. Right. How, how did, how, obviously it worked out well, but how, how did that go? Well, he's just really, really smart. So he picked all the right ways to introduce himself. He came in pretty quiet. So he shared the alternate captaincy with Patrick Hornquist when I talked to him. So this is a guy that is a captain. Mm -hmm. And asked them to share the A on the road, especially because three of our teams are in Canada, so we'd, we'd serve him up on the road. <laughs> yeah. um, no problems at all. And, and, and that is, that's kind of the unknown story or untold story about Matthew Kachuk. What you see on the ice is all competitive, all snarl, and it's real. He is a competitive man. What you see in the locker room is one of the guys, and he spends as much time talking to our third equipment guy as he does to Sasha Barkov, and they're all equal to him. Uh, what we're seeing from your netminder right now is pretty special, and we knew he had that in his resume, two-time Vezina Trophy winner. Hadn't quite seen that capability the last couple of seasons here yeah. in Florida. When you decide to go to him in round number one, did you know that he could get it back this quickly like that? Because he's been outstanding. Yeah, so, so his game was better earlier than just that. And I would say, I don't think we played the game in front of him the game a chance to be this good. So, and he's been, he's been brilliant, and we're not here without him for sure. But we're also at a compete level that's much higher than we've been. So when you turn our games on and you see him making a bunch of great saves, well, yeah, the one team had 135 points, and then yeah. the number two and the number – they're going to get chances. And uh, the Carolina is the best analytics team in the National Hockey League. We're giving up chances, and he's the reason that we're here. But, no, his game was right. But he went into the net in, in that game because it had to be him. How come? Because of the resources that he commands with our team. Because great players also carry a pressure. I know we always talk about how much they make, but there's a pressure that comes with that. 
So the coach then also has to give him an opportunity to rise to that occasion. So I had two goalies, and I had equal faith at that point in both of them. But the weight of the pressure and the weight of the situation was his to bear. I love that. You sit there and you think about it from a standpoint of we sometimes hear, well, this guy's not carrying the weight. He's, he's getting paid X amount of dollars. Well, hey, here it is. You got paid this. Now it's your turn to, to follow through with it and put right. that on him. And not every person can handle right. that. No one. So, so I look at it from the idea that it was his burden to carry. It's not about the 10 million. It's that if I'm going to put this weight on somebody, it has to be him. Yeah. And he wants that. Look at I. These guys are, are genuinely, I think, good men. All, all these guys, yeah, they make a lot of money, and they want to they want to deliver on that. And you have to give them a chance. I don't think the hockey team gave him a great chance to be as good as he could be early. We started playing a heck of a lot harder. He started playing a hell of a lot better. When he went when he went out on injury, he was playing fantastic. Mm. And then when he came back, it was it was his weight to carry. Mo, Mo, you think about where you are now, four games away, Stanley Cup final, and think about where you were with 10 days left in the regular season and, yeah. and, and how quickly perception of your season has flipped. I mean, it was a grind because you were going through this transition oh. and you've taken some big parts out of your team and, some, you know, there's stuff going on there right. and a good Eastern Conference where you're trying to make the playoffs. Right. And, and that, like, was your game trending in the right direction during the regular season? Did you see glimpses of what we've yeah. seen in the playoffs during the regular season, even if you weren't in the standings at 110 points? I'll try to keep the, the yes is the answer. I'll try to keep it short. I must have said 50 times this year to reporters, I love big chunks of our game. I what love a, it. What about when you said analytics, your analytics speech, where oh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you didn't like them in Winnipeg because they weren't kind to you, no. but you love them now in Florida because, because, we were you, because your analytics were good even though you weren't yeah, winning. Isn't that but the is truth? there something to that? Like was, you guys were playing was, better. So we got into December and we started playing harder. Right. But Barkoff was out, Lundell was out. We spent. We, the, we had two days off at home in a calendar month, and then our January schedule was even worse. So the last two weeks of our January schedule, we said, these two weeks will define our franchise for the next five years. Because mm. this is going to be so hard for us to do, and we played the best hockey. So the last game of that two weeks was against Boston. Sasha Barkoff tied it with 4.7 seconds left. To Sam Reinhart won it in overtime, and that was the first, hey, we can do this. I thought it was the episode on the <laughs> Toronto Maple Leaf bench, which was uh, one of the all-time coaching, yeah. laying into a team, which was beautiful. And some people were like, oh, that's too much. I'm like, that's beautiful. Uh, what did you tell them? Uh, well, it none was of amazing. It can go on here, but. but <laughs> <laughs> So that's, God, the, so here's the, that's the tail end, and I had to stop because I was going purple. That's the start. Uh, well tanned. Eric Stahl said, I've heard get coaches lose their mind, but never for that duration. So, you know what? Look at the reaction well, every, of the people behind you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> None of that mattered. None of it. But that's just the coach who's lost his mind because I loved our game prior. We, and we got beaten our game prior. We're into Ottawa. Right. Five on five. I loved our game. And then we come into this one and we're serving pizzas all over the ice. And that's none of what we've been doing for two months. It's not what we're doing here. I lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're oh, I know. I, I went went back at I it. just took a deep breath right. there. I went took good care of the Oh, glasses. my God. But <laughs> what I haven't said is in between periods, I said, you come back, you win this game. This is a player's win and it's got nothing to do with me. Mm. And for me, that was the handoff to the players for the year. Right. Because at some point, the players have to take the room and take the team. It's their team. It's their room. Uh, we've and they did. Assist. And they took it from that no, and, it, and it is their room now. I mean, we, we, the systems is over. We've talked about that. Now I'm just trying to watch emotions and watch kind of where I think the, the pressure is on our group and talk about that a little bit. But what goes on on the bench, we get into that Boston game in game six and the, and the score is going back and forth. They are running the bench. And I don't mean who's up next. What I mean is, I'm just about to say whatever, hang in there, whatever. Somebody else says it. Somebody else says it. Somebody else says it. It's not my bench anymore. They're running it. What, I, I, well, one quick one on uh, Mark Stahl. I uh, play with Stahl Z in New York. Uh, I, he's been pretty – you guys have a lot of unsung heroes as well. Yes. And I feel like uh, his game, he's, he's brought the clock back a little bit. Using him a lot. Big moments. First of all, he's funny as hell. He is. He, he is one. He's got. He was one he, of those guys in yeah. New York that keep the room light right. in, in, in dire and moments. Dry sense of humor. Anyway, not just his play, but we can start with that. He, he's been our most 
one of our most consistent players all year's game never changes and if something doesn't go his way on the ice it's not his brain and it's not his will he's, he's maybe not he's not getting up the ice he didn't score 18 this year he's not getting up the ice the same way but his his game focus and his preparation and his professionalism are outstanding so his play is critical to us but very possibly the biggest impact is on Brandon Montour mm. so he comes out of the five six now He's our leading scoring defenseman his game is just rounded into form and they've been partners since day one we always talk about rest versus rust you guys have had a lot of rest nine yeah. days off uh, is that a good thing do you think for your team this time of year this deep into a season and how do you give them a little time to enjoy the Eastern Conference final and that celebratory moment and maybe dial them back yeah. in to focus on the task at hand here challenges and opportunities there's lots of challenges with nine days off so we ran our same routine we had five days off we took two days off at the end I, we gave them a day off from the rink and then we did a recovery day and then we skated every second day we ran the exact same program here the all the things that you worry about rust losing that edge intensity that you have they're all real and then and it could possibly happen but I would take based on where we were at health wise uh, how hard that those three series that Carolina series was a fight for ice I mean they play such a hard to gap game I would take that all day long and risk all the things that I've worried about for five days right you having fun here I, I, we've known each other for a long time you're very intense on the bench we've seen glimpses of it <laughs> oh, really? but I, you know <laughs> we're all getting a little bit older you right. know perspectives change situations change have you been able to enjoy this ride all of it with these guys all of it and it's the off days as much as the game sure you win an overtime game in game seven that's awesome mm -hmm. and you can enjoy that but it's the off days too and it's all about I, I, I've said this a bunch of times in the media and I understand we got to come out we got answers and we get through it these guys are awesome to work with so one of the reporters says to me uh, one of the players said you've made coming to the rink fun every day like no I haven't because if they didn't work hard it'd be no fun for anybody these guys work their butts off in practice they work their butts off in the games yeah we make mistakes they care for each other which might be the most important thing a coach can get his team to do is to care for each other so that's and they're funny as hell so that's just if we've done anything we've allowed ourselves to laugh a little bit to enjoy it but this is all driven by the players and, and there's that great line don't be so humble you're not that good I, I'm, not, I'm not it's the players it truly is the players yeah, you're not it's bad awesome. though no and we're glad you're enjoying the moment we've enjoyed <laughs> you. watching you and your team and we wish you nothing but the best uh, thank you very much